Okay, so in this video, we are going to be writing a Python function that will allow us to determine whether or not a given string is a palindrome. So a palindrome, if you recall, is a string that can be read forwards and backwards the same. So here I have a variable s, and I have a string, was it a cat I saw? And this particular string is a palindrome. So you'll notice, was it a cat I saw from can be read this way from reading from the front to the back. And then if you look at it like this, was it a cat? I saw also can be read the same from the back. Notice that we're reading from the back sort of disregarding punctuation and also spacing and as well as uh, upper and lower casings. We're normalizing the case. So if we were to normalize the case, that is convert everything to lower case, remove all the spaces and remove all the punctuation, and if the string was read the same from front to back and back to front, then it would be considered a palindrome. So what we have here in this comment is a solution to this problem that is kind of just a one-liner, or at least a one or two-liner, that allows us to very quickly check whether or not a given string is a palindrome. And I'm going to briefly describe the solution, but it's not going to be the main solution that we'll cover in this video. The reason for that is because this particular solution, while concise code-wise, does require extra space that's proportional to the size of the string. So this particular solution requires both linear time and linear space. And the solution that we'll be coding up in this function will just require linear time. So let me just briefly go over the very concise solution. So what I'm doing here is I'm redefining the string s. So I'm taking the string s that we've defined up above here, and I'm essentially just doing what I more or less described as normalizing the case, checking whether or not there's any spaces and removing them, and then checking whether or not the character that we're considering is a actual letter or if it's punctuation or something like that. So the first thing that I'm doing in this join statement is I'm just joining all of the things together, assuming that they're alpha alphabetic, that is, as long as they're not punctuation. So this join statement gives me a string that just has the actual characters. So for instance, if we were to apply just that part of the statement on the string up here, the question mark would go away. Now we're also applying on top of that, we're replacing, so we're on top of that string that's returned without the question mark in this case, we're returning a string that removes all of the spaces and just converts them to nothing. So then the string after that will just be well, let's, let's just take it down. So the first join statement will get rid of that, that question mark. The next replace statement will get rid of all the spaces. So we'd have something that looks like, like this. And then the other, the, the final statement that we're actually applying, the final function that we're applying to this string just normalizes the case. So what this would do is it would just replace all of the uppercase characters in the string with lowercase characters. So we would get something like this. So let me just undo it back to the initial state and let me uncomment this print statement. Actually, let me just print out S so we can verify that that's actually what the uh, string looks like. So let me write this and then give it a run. So indeed we see that the punctuation is gone, the spaces are gone, and all of the case is normalized. So then the final thing that we do, I guess this second line here, is we're just printing whether or not the following statement evaluates to true or false. What we're doing is we're checking whether or not the string s is equal to the reverse of the string s. So once we've gone ahead and done all the pre-processing up in this line, we'll just check whether or not the reverse of the string can be read the same way as the regular string. And if so, then it's a palindrome, and if not, then it's not. So for instance, if we run the statement on the above string, we should get true, because indeed the string is a palindrome. So that, again, this, this does work, but it requires extra space. So we're going to consider another solution that just requires linear time to solve, because we of course have to go through the entire string character by character. There's no real way of getting around processing uh, each of the characters in the string to determine if it's a palindrome. Okay, so now let's think about a solution to this problem that will not require linear space, but will just require linear time. So the way that we're going to approach this problem here is we're going to have two iterators. We'll call those iterators i and j. So i is an iterator that will start from the front of the string and will progress character by character in the string and will read from front to back. j will be the iterator that will start from the back and it will start from the back and go towards the front and read character by character there. So these two should meet up at some point. So the iterator i will move from front to back, j will move from back to front, and along the way, they're going to ignore anything that's not an alphanumeric character. So they're going to ignore things like question marks, 
punctuation, spaces, things like that. So we're going to have one while loop that's just going to make sure that i is strictly less than j as we move our iterators throughout. And we're going to have two other while loops for i and j that are going to check that the element that i is on is not punctuation, namely while it's not an alphanumeric character and while it's strictly less than j, while i is strictly less than j, we're going to move the iterators through the string. So one is to make sure that we don't read beyond the bounds of the string, and the other is to make sure that we don't read things that we don't care about, like question marks, commas, periods, spaces, and those sorts of things. So let's go ahead and start coding that up, because I've said a lot, but I think once you see the code, it will become a little bit more straightforward. So let's define our iterators. i will be equal to the start of the string, and then j will be equal to the last element of the string there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say while i is strictly less than j, we're going to have our two loops inside of this loop that if they read a character that is not alphanumeric and i is less than j, it will move to the next element in the string. So if we start, for instance, let's say we i starts here from the beginning, j starts here from the end, we see that j encounters initially a punctuation mark, so a question mark. So basically it wants to ignore that. It wants to, while this is not an alphanumeric character, read until it encounters one. So read until, in this case, it encounters w. So then when it does that, we'll compare w to w, in this case, realize they match, and proceed. We'll also have to take care of the cases as well. We'll have to normalize the case. We'll get to that eventually. So while i is less than j, and now while not s of i dot alpha num, so, or is alpha num, and i is strictly less than j. So again, what this is doing is once we're if we're processing from the front, if this thing that we're processing, this character that we're processing is not alphanumeric and it's less than j, then just keep moving that iterator forward. So for instance, if we were to encounter a space here, we would want to move that iterator i forward to the next relevant character that we care about for comparisons, which in that case would be i. So we're going to move i by one. So likewise, we're also gonna have a while loop for j as well. So while not s of j dot is alpha num, and i is less than j because we don't want to read beyond the bounds of the string, we're going to increment j by one. And then finally, after these two while loops exit, we should be at a character. So we would compare in this case, if we started from the beginning for i, so i is okay, j encounters this question mark, hits the first while loop for j, and then encounters this w, and that's okay. So now we're on w and uppercase w. So now what we want to do is we want to check whether or not s of i dot lower is equal or not equal to s of j dot lower. So if the lowercase of those things do not match, we're just going to return false because for instance, if there was, let's say a q here, so if we had instead of a w up here, we had q, we would be comparing q to w and we would immediately know that this was not a palindrome. So we just want to return false. So if that is the case, if they're not equal, we're just going to return false outright. Otherwise, we're just going to increment i by one, so i plus equal one, and then we're also going to decrement j, because remember j is starting from the back and j is moving this way. And the way that we index uh, an element from the back of a string or an array or a list is using a negative indice. So we're going to decrement j by one. And then if we get through the loop, if we get through this final uh, while loop out here, we know that the string is a palindrome, so we'll return true. So that pretty much do it for this function. So we can go ahead and test this function on the string that we have up above. We'll say prints is palindrome of s. Let's go ahead and run that. And let's see, so, okay, I think I see an issue here. The reason that I have an issue is because we should be indeed incrementing i by one here, that makes sense. But we of course want to be moving j in the opposite direction. I don't want to be incrementing j, I want to be decrementing j. So that was my fault there. So let me change that and let me go ahead and give this a run again. And we see true. So it returned true for the string that we know already to be a palindrome. Let's go ahead and redefine s to be something that we know not to be a palindrome, the word test. Let's go ahead and write that and check if it returns false. So indeed, it does return false for that case as well. So that pretty much does it for this video. As always, the code will be hosted on the GitHub page that will be in the link below to this video. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye.